Hello everyone and thanks for watching this video. Okay, in this lecture we want to cover some basic concepts about the kernel and the shell and we want to see what is going on behind the scenes when we are doing use cases or use case scenarios during this course. So we have operating system layers. Every operating system in general has three layers. So the first layer here is the application which you are familiar with. So you have user applications or user apps, which are, for example, your Firefox, your Notepad, whatever you have running in your operating system. And we have daemons, which are the services, for example, MySQL, Apache, and other services that might run on your OS. So the next layer here is Shell, which we have a lot of work to do with it in this course. But what is Shell? So Shell is a command line interface which will interpret or will translate your commands for the kernel. So this is the interface between you or your apps or services and the core of the operating system, which is called kernel. And another task of the shell is sequencing commands and instructions so you can run them one by one. So what is kernel? Kernel is all about hardware management. So kernel is an application or program that handles your hardware for example it handles memory for you it handles io which is input output and every operation that needs cpu interaction and also it does process management for you so this is the core of your operating system as you see in this uh, slide here and we have two other layers which application is the outer one and kernel is the inner one closest layer to the hardware. So what is kernel? Think of it as an executive or think of it as system monitor. So it has two main tasks. As you see here, two categories. It executes stuff for you. And also it does system monitoring. So as you see here, process management is done via this monitoring concept here. So it controls and mediates access to hardware, as we talked about. So we have process management, file and disk management, and we have hardware management. Also, it schedules and allocates system resources, meaning memory or your RAM or CPU, disk, network, whatever it is. Enforces security and protection. So there is a lot of authorizations and authentications and other stuff or security stuff that is done by the kernel. Also, there is an important line here. It responds to user request for service. And we have system calls in parentheses. So this definition here is really important. Please note to system calls. So what is system calls? So whenever you want to do something and it needs kernel interaction, you are doing system calls. So whenever you call kernel to do something for you. For example, when you call kernel to do uh, some data writing on the disk, when you call it to send a packet over the network, when you want to actually assign some memory to application. So all these are done through system calls. And by system calls, we mean calling the kernel to do some task for us. I hope this makes sense. So we have kernel versus shell. And kernel is a computer program which acts as the core of the computer or system and has the control over everything. So as you see, core of the system that controls all the tasks. So a computer program which works as the interface to access services provided by the system. So this is Shell. So Shell is an interface between you or your apps and services and the kernel. So as you see here, interface between the system and user, and by system we mean kernel. And we have different types of shells. We have born shell, C shell, corn shell, and others. But also note that we are going to work on ZSH shell and also we are going to combine it with Terminator and Tmux to just power up our terminal emulator or shell actually to be more efficient on our tasks and we will introduce to you uh, actually what features they add to us in regards to running instructions and commands or doing our tasks on our servers or on our personal computers. So let's move forward to the next slide here. It is talking about user space, kernel space, and hardware. So what are these spaces? So in a basic definition, whenever you 
do an operation that needs kernel interaction or kernel code is running, you are running in kernel space. And by you, I mean your process or your program. So whenever your program wants to do some system call, wants to do some interaction with the hardware, for example, network operations or file operations, wants to do some memory management or process management, this all is done in kernel space. And whenever it is not, you are running in user space. So for example, in an application, when you want to assign some variable to other variables, or you are doing some for, for loops in order to do some tasks, you are in user space. But when you want to write a file or you want to uh, create a socket or send a packet, whatever that is related to the hardware and needs system calls, you are running or your program is running in kernel space. And also kernel space is in relation with the hardware regarding these categories. So let me just introduce to you a command here, which is called time. And time calculates the operation and tells you how much of it was done in user space and how much of it was done in kernel space or system. So as you see, I've done a ls and this is display operation. It displays the contents of this directory and it doesn't need any calculations and stuff. So all of it is done actually in user space. So you see, we, we don't have any system calls. But if I do, let's see, I want to do some MD5 sum, which is some hashing calculations on, let's say, so don't get into details. These are all explained during the course. Just uh, I want you to note to the concept, which is kernel space and user space. We want to calculate the time. So please calculate. We have a command called find, which searches the directory for, uh, let me show you, for different files here. And we have permission denied on some files. So we want to omit those permission denied with this instructions here. So as you see, permission denies are gone. So we want to do MD5 sum on every of these files. So it will grab the file and calculate the MD5 with the MD5 hashing algorithm and print you the MD5 hash for you. So I want it to be run on all this with backtick. You can do it with this syntax also, but I don't want to get to the syntaxes for now. So as you see, and again, we have uh, maybe we should just go to the dev null here. Yeah. So we don't have any permission denied. But as you see here, this is the MD5 sum of this file. This file here. So all this operation, we want it to be running time. So we want to calculate how much of it is running in what space. So as you see, we have a user timing and we have a system timing. So we have 0. 369 seconds running in user space and we have 0 0.049 seconds running in kernel space. So about this amount of operation is done by the kernel. So co kernel code is running. So that is what is happening behind the scenes uh, whenever you are working on different types of scenarios on your Linux operating system. So parts of your operations are done in user space and some parts of your operations or instructions are done in kernel space. And your process is going back and forth between these two spaces here. So that's it, everyone. We just wanted you to have a basic understanding of what is going on behind the scenes. And this will help you uh, during this course. So thanks, everyone. I will see you in the next lecture.